Kia ora. Welcome to this first lesson of the Heta School of Māori Art, which focuses on the gathering of harakeke, the gathering of New Zealand flax. In this video I'm going to show you the correct way of cutting flax, and also talk a little bit about the times when you can't gather, and the reasons why you can't gather during those times. All you're going to be needing for this lesson is a Stanley knife, or a, a sharp knife, to cut the flax with. And of course you need a source of flax, and we'll talk further about that um, later on in the videos. After this video, there'll be a lesson in the preparation of your flax for weaving. So I hope you enjoy your journey of weaving with me. Kia ora. I want to talk very briefly about the different types of flax, and the times that you can't gather flax. And then we'll look at how to correctly gather. So there are over 60 varieties of flax, and of those 60 varieties, some are good for weaving and some aren't. The ones that aren't very good for weaving are the decorative flaxes. They're usually coloured, and they're usually short, and they don't have a very high fibre content, and so they don't make for a very strong weaving. Of the flaxes that are good for weaving, some have got different qualities that make them good for different things. For example, the really long leafed flax is good for fariki or the mats. The flax with a very high fibre content is saved or is used for cloak weaving. And the flax that has got a very wide leaf uh, and is usually dark green in colour is a good flax for basketry. So that's the type of flax that you are wanting to look for. Now, once you find a good flax that you that you can work with there are different times when you can't cut flax so one time that you can't cut flax is when it's when it's raining the flax uh, absorbs or soaks in all of the moisture that lands on it and so if you cut flax when it's full of moisture it's going to be very hard to prepare for weaving and it's also likely to dry a very muddy color Another time is when it's very, very windy. Now when we're outside in the wind, we tend to hug ourselves, we wrap ourselves up in our arms, trying to protect ourselves from the wind. The flax, or the fibre in the flax leaf, does exactly the same thing. It clenches itself up tight, and so if you cut flax when, it's, when the fibres are clenched up tight, it's going to be very hard to prepare for weaving. Another time you don't cut flax is when the flax is covered in frost. Another time you don't gather flax, and it's a bit harder to explain, but when a woman is going through that time of her month of the month, it's best to stay away from the flax. It's quite possible that you get clumsy and forgetful at that time, and it's easy to make mistakes. So it's best to, to just have a rest from gathering flax at that time. Any other time, it's great to gather flax. So let's go ahead and see how we do that. Right, so there are a lot of different varieties of flax in this um, garden here, but it doesn't matter what type of flax it is, what variety it is, they all grow in the exact same way, and that is in a fan-like formation. So this is the very heart of the, that fan, those centre three. So you can see quite clearly, I hope, that there is a centre leaf and it's been embraced by two on the outside. So we call this one the rito and these two are the afi rito. Afi is to embrace and that's exactly what they're doing. And one day a little shoot is going to come up in between here and so this rito will become an afirito. So those three we don't cut, we just leave those. And I can cut all of those on the outside of those three. So you go down, right down low, and you cut on an angle away from the center of that plant. So the reason you cut on an angle away from the plant 
is so that any dirt or insects and the like that build up on this stub here, on this stump, when it rains, the rain washes it away from the centre of the plant. The other reason is, if I was to cut towards, towards, on an angle towards the centre, I could slip, especially with this sharp knife, and continue and cut all of those very important leaves. So what I do is go right down low and cut all those on the outside. Now this plant needs a really good trim. It's growing really well. So I'll just go through and cut quite a lot. It's good to have a Stanley knife like this with a retractable blade. The last thing you want to do is walk through the park or a school or down the street with a butcher knife. So it's a good idea to have a retractable bladed knife. Make sure it's sharp. So I'll cut a few more and that should be enough for what we're going to be weaving. Okay, that should be enough. So what I do now is I take off a small amount of the edge, just off two of them. It's a nice day to be out cutting flicks today. And I tie it up in a nice little bundle. ready for me to put in my car. Now I can see here a few dead leaves so what I'm going to do, if I can't pull them out, I'm going to cut them off. So just give the plant a bit of a tidy up while you're here. Take away the dead leaves. That's coming from another plant. I'll take that one tomorrow. And we've picked up all the kids lolly rubbish, lolly papers. That's it. We'll go home and prepare it. Okay. Kia ora.